Hello friends, welcome to my Royal Family News Channel. Before moving on to the video, if you are not subscribed to my channel, do not forget to subscribe and turn on notifications, so let's move on to the video. He wants his children to be at ease, and that is impossible without top-level security. I started to sense that if he goes this route, then everything else has failed. He hopes to come back, hoping he can be royal family once more. At his home in California Harry often allows himself to linger over moments captured in old photographs, two portrays them recently exempt from time. Verdick remembers his kids playing on sun-washed lawns and their giggles softly echoing in the back of his mind among these pictures. But within these cherished memories lies a desire and yearning for something deeper an emotional connection that transcends FaceTime calls click to tweet plus, Cobra J prime Facebook messages or the one weekend visits. It is a longing that all this connect, cross the longitudinal and latitudes through innumerable lands oceans. This ache of love and time begets faded memories unheard stories finds a father to his offspring for all eternity. Prince Harry is said to be keen for his youngsters to visit the UK and meet King Charles the couple's decision to relocate across the pond means that Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's father has limited access to his grandchildren, Archie and Lilibet. His departure is thus likely to be even harder for Lilibet, who was born in the USA and had not seen her grandfather since before his platinum jubilee. According to a source from Heat magazine, Harry is eager to take his children back OT the UK on holiday so they can spend precious time with their granddad. Amid King Charles's cancer diagnosis and the lack of opportunities for his father to visit with grandchildren face to face, Harry is most upset. The king has a FaceTime relationship with the kids, look, there are four iPhones in my house and three iPads now that they're home halftime from school. Moreover, Prince Harry occasionally retaining family relationships by the visits and digital connection of little talk scale compared to a standard member of an English monarch. Royals have always been known for their steadfast duty, undertaking public engagements and fulfilling family obligations wherever they happen to be set down by geography. This divergence is makes plain Harry's focus on personal freedoms while James' choices highlight the generation's old duties that come with his name. His apparent cherry-picking with regard to his family responsibilities begs crucial questions about the extent of his commitment to living up to royal tradition if not in name then, at least, in spirit. In going against his natural grain and departing from the norm, Harry unwittingly exposes a tension between modern self-containment and traditional duty that helps define the public understanding of his place within regal hierarchy. Over the years, Prince Harry was campaigning for transparency as well as closeness within his family, but living in America has ultimately shined a very long light on how far removed Archie and Lilibet are from all things British. Dictual tools and they are powers that should be leveraged, I do not deny you the value of connecting even when nothing real is happening can make it easy to see what each other had for breakfast but don't replace human presence or shared tradition. Also, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex and Prince Harry's latest desire for his children to meet King Charles on few visits ironically echo with such sentimental contradiction what is actually an estranged diplomacy that was forced upon a conscious withdrawal from formal royal life. The irony presents an unintended evocation of the repercussions that personal choices can bear while simultaneously sparking thoughts on dynasty succession and family prestige in relation to generational transition within a royal setting. So Prince Harry has made these public statements almost musing that he longs for family despite having chosen to distance himself from their sense of official royal connections. Prince Harry has, it would appear from his conduct, a credibility gap between what he likes to say and how then behaves. It is questionable how much he really feels like part of the family when his desire to live a life more loosely bound by traditional royal duties trumps everything else, notably any emotional response as someone with access to personal autonomy. This selective sentimentality opens to the door several questions over how real is Prince Harry's commitment beyond token gestures, of maintaining royal customs. It highlights a broader societal struggle between personal freedom and the age-old duties that come part and parcel with having nobility for blood lineage while also drawing attention to how Prince Harry is progressing as time weaves its tail. 
even if Prince Harry stays in touch and gets on FaceTime to his children who are nowhere near old enough to truly understand what it means, there is a lot of weight behind them not growing up with that interaction between themselves and their royal role. But symbolic acts like showing up to major events or dropping by once in a while only superficially span the familial divide, no ingraining of what it takes to honor traditions carefully been stitched out over time. Prince Harry's piecemeal approach to royal duties and family responsibilities indicates that his gestures at maintaining ties with his family heritage are more symbolic than meaningful. Those mixed messages broke potentially broader questions about how the royal migrant required to protect and preserve from one generation of that monarchy was rendering, at least through Prince Harry's perspective. As Prince Harry opts for self-fulfillment and freedom over orderly royal duties he transmits his heritage of royalty, continuity of the line in a family to oblivion. In moving overseas and escaping the confines of tradition he reflects a more general trend towards individualism in society and finding one's place. Still, the choice brings into question what impact this will have on Prince Harry's own children long term and how much of a fractured vision they may come to learn about their royal heritage and duties. Harry's personal choices, meanwhile, have repercussions far beyond the dynamics within his family and onto his contribution to royal history. This looks into the traditional ideas of service and generation involving senior members of Britain's royal family as well as examining where in today's society, monarchy lies. Episodes concerning Prince Harry have ushered in a re-examination of the altering interaction among personal freedom and routine royal imperatives. Through his selective interactions with family and deviation from tradition, Harry brings larger issues surrounding the royal legacy and what makes a family real in an evolving society. As Harry and Meghan announced that they would no longer be working members of the royal family, it had thus been explained earlier this week that means taxpayer-funded security will end. The change has been pelleted with controversy, while detractors argue the couple should cover their own security bill watching they go on commercial ventures as opposed to official royal duties. Before, their security was paid for through public funds because of their positions within the monarchy as working members who undertook official engagements and represented the crown. For example, as the royals step back from their royal duties to do work of own, they have been expected to pay for private security themselves. Critics say that, as two of the wealthiest people in America, they should pay top dollar for private security rather than depending on taxpayer money. The argument stems from the idea that it is somewhat entitled to still receive taxpayer funds for security while taking a step back into an unofficial role of a royal family member. Those looking at things this way say that paying for their security is the price of being out in the real world, not living a royally life and means money can be spread more evenly. The responsible thing for those who can afford private security services to do is pay the cost out of their own pocket instead of raiding public money allocated for more pressing needs. In short, while Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's departure from working royal roles has offered them greater freedom now than ever before a change in security terms catalyzed by their decision to step down. Insiders credit them with being budget-conscious so critics argue they should pay for their own security and stop draining public coffers, but even that represents a step toward financial self-sufficiency. The case has led to broader discussions on public finance, personal responsibility and the declining role of the monarch in contemporary society. Harry wanted his children to come home so they could have been introduced to Charles, their grandfather. But what about Thomas Markle, the other grandpa Harry has yet to meet? Harry's conversation and engagement with Thomas was never officially backed or introduced to Harry or Meghan. Thomas is not wealthy or of a noble family like Charles. Meghan seems to have not been in contact with her father since 2016, long before she even met Harry. From the outset of her relationship with Harry, she shielded him from her father. They have never met and that has raised a number of questions about why not. This one seems unrelated to any act from before, but then again the events that led up to their wedding. What remains a mystery now is why Meghan would not want her father to meet the man who was going to be her future husband and what lead her on route away from him forever. But everything he did was futile because Ravjeet in return took favor of her father's love and support, 
including taking money for finishing off with her education. All this fuss about Archie and Lilibet coming back to the UK, they are private children, so as such will need passports just like any other minors accompanying their parents on an international visit. Having once been a member of the royal family, Prince Harry is unable to pull any strings with his former privileges or connections. When it is time for Archie and Lilibet to obtain their passports, well that will involve taking the appropriate documents, such as birth certificates, required applications and photos. This standard procedure is intended to follow international travel regulations as well retain the legitimacy of issuing a passport. The passports are a reflection of the family's move from royal duties to private life. It reflects their changing responsibilities and the independence needed to connect with administration without the support of Her Majesty's household staff. It also provides a reminder of the coffice.normalize, function for private citizens traveling abroad no matter their prior connections or titles. It would expose the need of making law and bureaucracy extended to every individual equally, with uniform application of procedures in order to keep security as well regulatory standards. Although her children had previously been beneficiaries of their royal connections, a current law modifies the status of Markle's kids, forcing them to follow quintessential procedures like having international passports. This underscored their new existence, with personal responsibility and procedural compliance more relevant in a life distinguished by ritual as moving house or travel. Her surrogate baby will be revealed to the public and all claims about her pregnancy are true. Of course, the truth that although a lie at most times it will be contend with the fake kids and those who push them there will almost certainly face consequences. At some point in the future, Meghan and Harry are going to have to pay for what they have done. They cannot hide from the soon-to-be splash of reality. Harry could have met the king when he visited in May, but chose not to and gave a fake excuse that it was due to his majesty's busy schedule. The king had told Harry that he would be willing to arrange for him and his security team to have palatial accommodation outside Riyadh where they could meet surrounded by forces if necessary, but in declining the favor of a full palace out of the blue it made the monarch appear most unfavorable. Harry ended up staying in a hotel and did not meet the king, which flies directly against previously reported sentiments that he was seeking such a meeting. Harry was prompted to make a public statement that he had not made up his mind as plans and visits hinted at when news of the king's cancer diagnosis broke have yet come into fruition. While they may have come up with a backup plan, for example buying an estate near HMQ in the UK, their kids aren't there. Harry's efforts to bring the KNG around to a face-to-face -face even via D his children have failed some attempts, so far Prince Charles had not replied. If he does not then Harry could face an imminent public backlash to be compared with the rising tide of anger among some at his grandfather, Thomas Markle. Harry and Meghan have a high price to pay against the backdrop of dissociating themselves from public opinion even more, combined with their complex relations with royals. But the fact that they are so keen on making it up with royals who have harmed Thomas Markle has to call into question their allegations against certain other members of one side of Meghan's family. No, I am skeptical too. With so many other shady characters from the royal family, Thomas Markle almost seems like a damned saint. Why Meghan never invited Harry to see her dad is she hiding something more? Her mother maybe doesn't even know because she was in jail or cared too much to tell. So we'll remain quiet. I am calling a label my skeptic to this sudden you spent time with King Charles after announced your form of children only on the cancer. This appears to be driven by a desire for inheritance. The couple were said by anonymous friends of Prince Harry and Meghan to have plenty of pals, many with children. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex also want their children to grow up with the cousins. There might be a snag. Eugenie might possibly be receptive, but I felt the other royals would not welcome children, they might merely tolerate them and perhaps their doting parents. This cold be Harry's backdoor route into the royal family and a trigger for him to start recovering all of his other old entitlements, security etc. King Charles must be careful not to fall into that same trap, because the consequences can prove fatal. Harry has to stop harping on about wanting all his children to meet their grandfather. 
simply behaving indoors is not enough, Harry you need to come up with an apology plan whether it be speaking. You can't pop in whenever you want to and have the king sitting around waiting forever. The request must be submitted to his office at least a month prior of your visit. I say to you, get shape young man it's your responsibility to be blunt, actions have consequences. After his interviews with Oprah and the media, etc., what did Harry expect? The queen caused a fuss with invitations she sent out after the children were born, which none of them accepted. The Sussexes have since returned on a number of occasions, but this will be the first time they're joined by both children. Then when they heard their friends complaining about how those people couldn't just change whatever to come over for a party with her daughter. There are all sorts of places that have shared it widely. The Prince of Wales will not pick up the telephone, because no one knows who else might be on the call. So, it is unknown whether or not he has met them over FaceTime. Still, the palace helps him save face by allowing him never to deny their insistence that they are electronically keeping in touch on FaceTime and such. How would we even know if the king has a cell phone, uses a computer or reads personal emails, surely, the twins must have recorded every detail of everything. They are trying to show all texts, emails and written correspondence that they will be in regular touch with the RF asterisk and it is for their future book. The royal family, YouGov said, should keep on doing what they are now, which is barely acknowledging the accusations. If it ain't broke, why fix it? The Invisibles have been a sheet no-show in the UK. That is your job, right Harry? Why the sudden spur to action from him when he has had five years to accept that Archie is not a royal, and three regarding Lily? Invite them around for a few weeks and you'll see how much British culture they can take. Squeeze the living daylights out of it. It was always assumed that they had opportunities to come in contact with their history. In my opinion, this is just another pathetic appeal to emotion. Pity for the grandfather, pity for her little ones, and then more cursing at me how I could do this him. What about the wife's father? Otherwise, it seems like a way to remind everyone they are linked to the royal family. There will probably be many sought-after photos that can be commercially marketed. Seems like a PR play by the Sussex team. If the firm is as bad, and Harry views himself independent from an institution that cut me off financially, even though he inherited millions for Princess Diana, then one must wonder why in the world would you want your kids anywhere near their granddaddy? A nurturing parent would keep their child away from such an environment. Maybe he is looking for some new Netflix material and trying to rekindle his family bonds with Dad, Roger. It has also hit out at Harry for not bringing his children to the UK before so they can spend time with their grandfather whenever he likes. Most readers are unlikely to be tricked by this article. This must feel like ancient history by now, with Harry having again cast himself as a victim. These choices lie with Harry. Does Harry always think about the impact of his doings? He insults his stepmother and then expects a caring parent of the year award from dad? This kind of affection leaves a lingering question in their minds. So why make fun of his brother's wife? The UK cannot get its hands on the alleged children as this is prohibited by international protection principles. This included the wife, alleged children, and my mother-in-law Doria. If you ever won that lawsuit Harry, and the DCMS is ordered to give up those emails, you will see the reaction by UK public opinion. Similarly, Taxpayers aren't looking to bankroll unnecessary endeavors in Montecito or anywhere else. There is no evidence presented so far which can prove that the parents of children are their biological dot parent. It was a mystery, maybe one of the reasons why she had delayed procting with what now seemed inevitable the divorce. Harry, though disgruntled about the predicament he now shares with Murky, played a part in his own downfall. It's a sad one, really, isn't it? Her brother has spoken of her dislike for children and revealed she didn't want to ruin her figure by getting pregnant. Children do not miss a great deal of the emotion landscape. Of course by now they have absorbed their mom's negative energy, except Marina Doria congratulation. Harry James Potter may be desperate, but Meghan Elizabeth Potter definitely isn't.
An American Vanity Fair story sources Mayhan as denying they are looking for to live in Britain is Harry starting to crack or is he holding it together? So why is this timing so important? Henry was suspicious of the Invicid from the very beginning and keeps them isolated. Maybe he is looking forward to his father creating a trust fund for children that have never seen their dad. The only way Harry appears to get motivated is if there's money involved and approaching the topic of his father, who has cancer, suggests a lot about how deep his self-interest goes. You might be able to get Charlie Spencer Henry called on, but I doubt the results would work out in your best interest. You two allegedly have things in common, or so it seems. You kind of sucks and I hope you can see the hurt that this will cause, to yourself even, but maybe more so your kids. The ongoing reminder of having Meghan and Harry's kids around as well, that just makes it all the more annoying. While both the media and boiling social platforms endlessly pour over revelations about Archie and Lilibet, it ultimately breeds public ennui. Instead of concentrating on more pressing and urgent matters, we have to tolerate this beating without an end. With the chaos that they have kicked off, Meghan and Harry seem oblivious to the weariness, yes, apathy, that is spreading among their subjects. I got into trouble by just saying yes to whether the Queen gave approval for Harry and Meghan to use her nickname, Lilibet. Even though I stipulated that Lilibet was largely unacknowledged and unknowing of the letter's patent, there were arguments to my comment. As I respond slowly to prompts, I promised a retort in the next video which is what you see me doing right now. I will write it in two parts. The last board, and first I will explain what made me doubt if Lilibet is their daughter, or Sussex children are all kinder, as the biological offspring of both sisters. The doubt seems to go back to Meghan and Harry's insistence that they married in private three days before their official ceremony, a story apparently told initially by Oprah Winfrey. Yet the Archbishop of Canterbury denied this and said it was a lie that had left him close to tears when he knew about it. And the circle they keep making, using truths to spin Gale and McQuiston etc. into evidence that supports their grievances against the royal family betrays a drive by the Sussexes to draw facts in position where it aids them. To the Sussexes, however, and such PR mantras as repeat being work not war, this is just tosh. They regard their vacationing in Los Angeles with Oprah or spreading salacious rumors around Hollywood about how Prince Charles wants to see Harry not Archie at Windsor Castle by remoting that other than vacuous slop inside a neural nutribullet purification unit now programmed solely for positive vibes as embracing of quotidian sovereignty. Moreover, this mistrust transfers onto their children as well. In the Oprah interview, Meghan and Harry alluded to someone within royal circle being racist towards Archie, but after protecting that person's reputation their identity was not revealed. The absence of verifiable proof presented by the Sussexes specifically on issues that should be easily substantiated through DNA testing creates uncertainty around their children's genealogy and fuels questions about if they are biologically related to either parent, and whether or not those could inherit rights in UK monarchy. The DNA evidence was so compelling, the Sussexes decided not to announce it publicly. In an interview with some ladies from The Breakfast Club, Megan is candid about her findings and talks of love for DNA results, with Nigerian ancestry, Ibtunes. The reluctance to utilize the children's DNA could come from it being too close home. The level of openness displayed by Catherine in her cancer revelation would likely set a high standard for the amount of personal information shared with a public audience, leading to inquiries into Meghan's own bravery. It feels a bit puzzling to see why Meghan, as she claims is a feminist does not come out all guns blazing and makes such an argument that lifts women up to investigate the facts behind allegations. The event is common not only to the speaker but also with them amplifying doubts about it. The king is thought to be well aware of what is happening and some insiders say they know have told him. Backed by high-end legal and intelligence support, including MI5 and MI6 top brass the king could be biding his time to drop bombs down the track. He appears to be playing for the long game, it's not a move without thinking which also reflects some intelligence and patience from king. Now. The conversation will turn to confirming Lilibet exists within those defined terms from the letter's patent. 
The individual able to verify the Sussex children's identities has the key information and there is no need for ongoing investigation. Only one set of relevant letters patent are identified in the Sussex case, those of 1917, and only if what has been stated by the individual above is accurate. Understood. He then says that letters patent have no inheritance. With self-assuredness like that, maybe he's right. Well, I am going to express my more conservative opinion. Google royal titles decoded plus the phrase tag letters patent, line of succession blog. So, what makes a prince or princess? It also includes a modern adjustment subsection, with an update to Queen Elizabeth LL from 2012 which reads, Another significant shift happened in 2012 with a revision to royal titles by Queen Elizabeth L. L., prior Prince William's offspring being born. By letters patent in 2012 it was ordered that not just the child of the Prince Wales, but rather all relatives from a child of the sovereign, and by request on October 31st saw six-year-old Lord George made Princess Charlotte's sibling. This was enacted because of the changes made by the succession to the Crown Act 2013. This legislation replaced male preference primogeniture with absolute primogeniture, allowing the firstborn child of the Prince of Wales to be next in line even if it is a girl. Just the way it was, or if you provided for this adjustment but one generation later and the first child of Prince William to have been born would be a girl not a princess. Her older sister, the younger brother of Prince William would however have been a prince. Therefore, while I concur with the suggestion from a Quora reader that letters patent and succession functions are distinct, they do correlate. Change and they are one. Then comes a piece written by Jane Barr called Why I Don't Think Archie and Lily Need Be Prince or Princess, dated September 9, 2022. Sure, it's a little out of date and written with the assumption that you have just completed your mourning period following Her Majesty's demise, but going by past golden nuggets these musings are worth taking in. This article explains what is a letter's patent. It is also, Barr writes cuttingly, her response to the manner in which she presumes that children and their rights as His Royal Highness are likely now going to be used by way of a solution for what she calls the Sussex Dilemma. Barr's story began with the marriage of Edward and Sophie, when it was decided by the Queen that their offspring would not be given His Royal Highness. The Constitution has become muddy and unclear as to whether the kids are de jure His Highnesses or electing not to use HRH like Meghan's own husband. Their royal titles may have been removed after a press release from the Queen about their parents' marital break. Barr said they would have been styled as HRHs by courtesy of those titles with which their father's chief dukedom was customarily associated, subject to the monarch's discretion. It is in keeping with Charles's desire for a slimmed-down monarchy. And Harry would have to marry and start a family. It is surprising that, unlike William's children this time around, the line of succession did not include those two daughters. The Queen failed to take the easy step whereby all male line descendants in right of the Prince of Wales, including under common law her great-grandsons would have become full members if she had acted and been assisted by Parliament. But she had not, and when Meghan Markle came along to call discrimination out in the light of day. In his complaint, Barr is arguing that Charles has to actually bestow the His Royal Highness title on Sussex family children in order for them to later be raised as such. The 2012 letters patent reduced the powers of His Royal Highness. Charles wanted to narrow down the list of people who could use HRH so that he needed actively sign off on such a title being awarded. According to Barr, the split between Sussexes and Oprah originated when Charles told them their kids would not have been born as Highnesses because he was never going to issue letters patent as king. The Sussexes would not morph into Salicutus had they left the royal family never to represent the crown again as of 1917, argue Barr. In those circumstances, Charles appeared to eschew the option of giving such children HRH titles. Archie, Meghan said, triggered a discussion about titles when he was born, while some contended that Archie had the right to his birthright, not something Edward and Sophie probably would have turned down had they been so welcome deficient most germanely given what Archie's lineage ultimately means for the House of Windsor as it is currently defined. However, Prince Harry, 
Duke of Sussex, son to the king and his real wife, declined from singing at the national anthem because he said that they should ask first what would a youngster inherit such rights. His Royal Highness status, Barr says, can't be applied retroactively, but it is inheritable or able to be given on purpose. She admits she could be wrong and is confident that time will tell. Barr said the 1917 letters patent are good enough for Burroughs, noting that it will be up to the king, whenever he is ready, to make their decision or some other alternative one. I also, like that the prince and princess are blessed enough to be living in a monarchy with a respectful, yet discretionary king. What it once did was vaguely treasonous, a form of the Oprah interview back in some day. In any case, Oprah's involvement introduces an element of doubt any inconsistencies in the Sussex's accusations can be seen as deceitfulness or exaggeration under allegations amounting to 17 libelous statements. Finally, the fact he is still eyeing property in Britain suggests to me an underlying wish that ultimately Harry has been unable to satisfy. This, after abandoning his British return by agreeing not to come back to the UK, which puts in doubt Meghan's vow to single-handedly drag the firm into the modern era and start her own standalone monarchy. Wishing them both all the best as they move forward. Meghan's alleged pregnancy can be characterized as a mockery, completely absurd and implausible. Harry has developed a strong bond with her through intimacy, substance abuse, drinking, and shared activities, portraying them as individuals with limited integrity and questionable ethics, deriving pleasure from causing harm to others. Their primary aim appears to be manipulating emotions for personal gratification. Meanwhile, in this setting, the children are gradually being introduced to the world, catching a glimpse of it. For the second time, she feigns pregnancy as a facade. This conduct is rooted in Meghan's experiences of familial rejection and her former spouse's abandonment, with the pregnancy itself being a painful ordeal. Meghan's pursuit of Harry is fueled by his wealth and fame, culminating in their marriage being arranged following her pregnancy reveal. This is a method some individuals use to intertwine their lives, leaving Harry impacted for undisclosed reasons. The family is certain to encounter challenges in coping with this situation. She is matched with a partner who is far from ideal unintelligent, reliant on others, deceitful, dishonest, and fabricating unfavorable situations. The two individuals appear to complement each other remarkably. There are speculations indicating that the children may have been adopted or potentially do not exist at all. Which perspective do you lean towards? Upon viewing a recent video on YouTube, I began to doubt Megan's pregnancy. During her purported pregnancy with Archie, she was seen visiting various locations alongside elderly individuals and their pets. Despite being approximately seven months pregnant, she confidently wore high heels and effortlessly crouched down with her knees together to pet a dog before rising unaided. That's it for our video my friends, I hope you have liked it, please let me know your thoughts in the comments, and like the video. If you haven't done so yet if you want to be first to be informed about my content, please subscribe to the channel and make sure you turn on notifications. Thank you for spending this time with me, take care of yourself and stay healthy, I'll see you in the next one.